Windows and Xbox, there's a lot to talk about. Happy Friday, friends. It has been it has been a crazy good week. Uh, if you are in the camp of Microsoft, I guess I should say maybe maybe not necessarily if you're internal to Microsoft or you're planning something for next week. But from an outside observer, there was just a ton, a, a ton of information. We had uh, Windows 11 leak. Windows 11 leak. We had uh, just a ton of stuff going on with Xbox. Um, there was also Microsoft's hybrid event. And so next week is looking even crazier. But let's just dive into what happened last week today. So uh, Surface Hub. That thing that Microsoft announced initially that was going to be, full, I should say, Service Hub 2, that Microsoft initially announced it would be foldy and, and extensible and all that stuff that really just kind of turned into a, a second generation of the first thing. Anyways, is evolving yet again. Microsoft Teams software has always been on the Service Hub, but now Microsoft is actually taking it to the next logical level, and they're turning it into a Teams Rooms experience, which is a little hard to say, but this is a, a customized experience designed explicitly for meeting in environments and it's honestly a little bit surprising that it took this long for it to arrive but anyways uh look for that to be arriving here i believe sometime starting this summer microsoft is going to roll out that experience so if you have that hardware by the time hopefully everybody's migrating back to the office or whatever your office is doing that experience will be live on those devices uh, microsoft also completely overhauled its whiteboard experience now this is an application that allows you to as the name suggests whiteboard from multiple locations and they did a pretty good job it's kind of hard to explain in words but it's now much more collaborative uh it's not quite using fluid components which we'll talk about here in a second yet but those are coming soon speaking of fluid which i personally believe is probably the most exciting thing in the microsoft 365 universe or i should say office 365 universe if you're not familiar with Fluid, it was originally announced as the Fluid Framework, which they eventually open sourced. But these, think of it like the best way I can describe it is imagine having a table in Excel and you take that table, you, you copy it and you paste it into Teams. Now, when you update that table inside of Teams, it also updates in the Excel document. That is how the Fluid Framework is supposed to work and how Microsoft is building it out. It's just basically compart components of other applications embedded in other applications that sync in real time. It's a really neat feature feature and really neat on paper. We got to wait and see how it works in practice. And Microsoft announced a bunch of new components that will be coming eventually. There are some that are going to arrive initially uh, this summer that Microsoft, I believe, announced uh, announced at Build, and they announced more components coming to OneNote, Whiteboard, and the Teams meetings experience, but those won't arrive until next year, but they will start going into private preview sometime later this year. Now, the big, the biggest news of the week by far is the Windows 11 leak. Now, if you haven't uh, seen or heard much about it, I have a good walkthrough video on my YouTube channel, which you can find uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just go scroll back. If you're not, just go to YouTube, whatever. Um, it really walks through what is going on with Windows 11. Now, I got to caveat you that it's not complete. This is a, a build that was not intended to ever be seen. I know there's like conspiracy theories out there that says, hey, this was this was leaked to, to, to set the state. No, like this is this was unintentional. Um, I, I really firmly believe that down to my, my, my inner core <laughs> that this was not intended to be leaked um, just because of the way that it came out. And so we get a first look at it. We get to see the updated start menu. We get to see a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but there's a lot of things we still don't know yet. For example, we don't honestly know if it's going to be free. We kind of all assume it's going to be free as a free upgrade because, hey, uh, Windows 10 was ba was a free upgrade. Actually, you can still install Windows 10, I believe, today with a Windows 7 or 8 key and like, it doesn't throw a fuss. So you can just do that. So I would assume that Windows 11 is free, but that's kind of a dangerous assumption. But for an upgrade, that's one thing. The other thing, too, is so what happens if you're on Windows 10, right? You're on Windows 10 and you're happy and you don't want to go to Windows 11. Is it going to just, is your machine just automatically going to do it someday? Um, because Microsoft has gotten pretty good at shipping large updates via Windows Update. And so are they just going to kind of like ram this down everyone's throat or will you be able to stay on Windows 10? Things we don't know. Uh, what about Windows 10X sandbox mode, right? My, that was one one of the key features of Windows 10X was this ability to sandbox Win32 applications, which dramatically increased the security profile of running legacy applications. But we don't know if that's actually coming to Windows 11. Uh, what about the update cadence? Microsoft just sort of backed off what they initially launched with Windows 10. Remember when Windows 10 launched, it was two big updates per year. And now we sort of get like a, a small 
little dribble in the spring and then a, a more substantiated update most of the time in the fall. Is Microsoft going to change that? We still don't know. What about the store? The, the store experience that is in the leaked build is absolutely not the new store experience that Microsoft is launching. So that is still unknown. There's still just a lot out there. I also know for a fact that the UI that we see is not the final UI. There's It's a good good estimator, a good framework of what you're going to see when Microsoft does finalize it, but it's not what we saw. It, it's not the final bit. There's other components that are missing from the experience, so we have more surprises to come next week, unless, I guess, another build leaks um, sometime over the weekend between and now and then. And then just to sort of amplify things a little bit more, Microsoft announced that there's going to be a developer event next week on the 24th, too. This is after the big announcement. Whatever it is, Microsoft is going to have a developer-focused event which is a little odd considering they just had build which was just a few short weeks ago but either way uh, Microsoft is really stacking the deck for a big announcement on the 24th I know that some of the air got let out of the balloon with the leak this week but there's still so much we still don't know we also still don't know when we're going to get it I think a lot of people are assuming that we're going to get it on the 24th but we don't we honestly just don't know Microsoft hasn't there was nothing in the leak to build that would indicate that and we we just don't know and we don't actually know when it's going to ship we would all kind of think it's going to ship in the same timeline as the October releases typically do, which would make a lot of sense. But again, we still don't know because Microsoft, the reason why I, I'm a little more cautious is that Microsoft is resetting the establishment here, right? There's new leadership. We're going to have a new build of Windows. If Microsoft is going to change how and when they are going to ship versions of Windows, this is the type of event, I hope. I, I say this with the caveat that Microsoft changed the update cadence so many times with Windows 10. Maybe they won't. But if they're going to change it, Windows 11 announcement time is probably a good time to do that, to set the stage. And it, I hope for Microsoft's sake that whatever they announce on Windows for on June 24th with Windows 11, like that's what sticks. I don't want to have to rewrite right, a revisionist history of the updates cadence or, or something along with the OS here in a few months or whatever. I hope that whatever they announce is clean, clear, and concise and well thought out, like all the way from the home user up through the enterprise so that that way there's not just a bunch of uneasiness about the process that Microsoft is going to introduce in the new OS that Microsoft is going to introduce uh, next week. So I'm excited for the 24th. It's going to be a big day. It's going to be a very busy day for me, uh, but that is always a good thing. It's a good thing. It's going to be the easily the biggest Windows day in six years. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's bigger than the Windows 10 launch because Windows 8 was such a disaster, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, hype around this event even though we've gotten a first look and I'm still excited to see what is going on. On to the gaming news. So this was the other like big sort of drop of information this week. Microsoft, I, I think Microsoft deserves a lot of credit for this E3. Not every E3 that Microsoft has done has been really well orchestrated, clear and concise communication. And, and like you could feel the difference, even though this one was all virtual and we didn't actually see people on stage or have that, that feel of the audience or anything like that. I, I, Microsoft deserves a lot of credit for this because they had very clear and concise messaging. Um, they really cleared the air about what is going on with the Bethesda acquisition. They came out very bluntly starfield exclusive they raised a lot of heck on the internet or hell if you want to what i don't know why i said heck whatever anyways they raised a lot of hell on the internet uh with starfield going exclusive obviously the uh, sony uh basically anybody not in the xbox ecosystem getting upset about that but you don't pay 7.5 billion dollars for a company to share the wealth um at the end of the day and they really really drove home the message of the value of game pass their their showcase had 27 of 30 titles coming to game pass i believe on day one if not not long after they launch um, the only big notables are things like battlefield uh, which are not coming to Game Pass, at least. They are not announcing that yet. And that I, I would actually bet that Battlefield will eventually come to Game Pass, but it's probably one of those things like six to eight months after launch or something like that. EA is going to pull in the cash and then maybe put it over there. But we'll see. We will see. But the thing, the thing here is, make no mistake, that Xbox really is starting to, to hit its stride. Like, they felt really confident in their direction. And uh, the communication around, like, hey, Game Pass is the future. It's cloud gaming. It's any endpoint. It, the messaging was there. The games were there and the execution was all there and that's that's not something that always happens with the world of Microsoft or more specifically sometimes Xbox and so this E3 
I think they did just a really good job of aligning a message and get it out. And the thing you got to take away from this is this wasn't something that just happened since January, right? This has been years of investment to get to this point. You don't get all these titles launching on Game Pass by just signing a few contracts in September. This takes years of, of vision and foresight and then uh, getting all the pieces in place and then actually executing and then getting it all aligned so that it actually does happen when you need it to happen. As they said on stage, uh, building games is very difficult, very difficult. Uh, and getting the the game developed, getting it funded, getting it delivered, and getting it ready uh, for Game Pass is a very long journey. And the fact that Microsoft was able to get all these pieces to align and for the second half of this year, they deserve some credit for that. And they, they really, really do. So uh, on to the questions of the week, because there are, I think, record-setting amount of at least comments uh, on to the questions. So, uh, ooh. <laughs> Ikejondon? Ikejondon? probably butcher that what is the likelihood of windows 11 reducing update annoyances well i i guess the question becomes what do you consider the annoyance for me personally i think the annoyance is that there's these two pots of updates per year and one of them will you know kind of take over your machine and then it's like your files are right where you left them hopefully um i hope that I, I hope that it does. I hope that Microsoft really just aligns again on the update cadence of, I'm, I'm hoping there's just one update per year. Microsoft has really shown that that's probably where they're headed because as the spring update we just saw only fixed things like Windows Hello cameras uh, it, and that was it. And to me, that's more of like a patch Tuesday sort of thing. And the fact that it, it just does it overnight and you don't even notice that it does the install really makes me think that Windows 11 will reduce the number of annual significant updates uh, to the OS. Uh, Iceman's, Iceman, Jaceman says, uh, one extra question. How does all the feature experience pack Windows 10 versus Windows 11 licensing ooh, come into play if Windows 11 is also Windows 10 Cobalt 21 H2? I don't think it's, well, um, the licensing on this is impossible to know at this point. I would assume that the Windows licensing model that has existed with Windows 10 is probably not changing. It's probably not changing. Although licensing is a lot like marketing. You can change it at any moment. And if Microsoft really feels like turning that wrench of revenue, um, they can do it as they please. But I would not expect significant licensing changes with between Windows 10 and Windows 11. And it says, do the operating systems differ by just by feature experience or both by feature experience and build number? I believe it's a little bit of both, but I believe, well, I, see, we don't quite know Microsoft's full strategy here that we, you can imagine that the underlying build actually probably may not change and that the experience packs do exactly what they say. They bring different experiences to it without updating the underlying build. These are all of the unknown questions that Microsoft hasn't laid out. We can try to guess based on what is happening with the insider program and seeing all the different builds either being stabilized or still coming out uh, with different variations, but it's you're you're reading tea leaves but not exactly the best tea leaves because microsoft will make a final decision and then just stick with it hopefully uh tourniquet says i've got a couple questions and that is okay uh will there be an option in windows 11 to use the classic start menu in the leaked build there is not an option for it yet so we don't know this actually and in classic i would assume you mean windows 10 and not classic like like windows xp or whatever anyways um, as of the build that leaked, there is a registry key that you can tweak that will bring back the old start menu. Will Microsoft leave that available in the registry? We don't know. We don't know. So technically, as of the leaked build, yes, but we don't know if that's actually going to be in the final build. Uh, what does Windows 11 mean for the future of Windows Core OS? If you remember back in the day, there was a battle between Meyerson and Sanofsky regarding whether the... This, which is the better OS for tablet and Windows Phone and all of that, I would not think. So it is my understanding that features and functionality that, that were developed for Windows Core OS will be migrated to proper Windows. We don't fully know where that Windows Core OS is, but what we are seeing indicated by Microsoft with the canceling of Windows 10X is that the proper Windows that we have known and enjoyed for decades is the future for at least now. So that's all we know. And then three, do you have any information on Windows Nickel? Will if Windows Nickel will be a desktop release or if they will skip it similarly to the skipped Magnes for the desktop. Oh, you're referring to the code names. I was thinking of the coinage here in the United States. Um, 
I think it's a bit too... I mean, I know that there's Sun Valley 2 already in development, so I think that probably... I don't know if they're going to use that codename. The reason why I don't know if they're going to use that codename is if I remember correctly, that is an Azure naming scheming convention, and things have changed, right? We've already seen Sun Valley in the names Cherry Hill, and there's also Firesteel, and there's also, I think, another one floating around in there. Uh, so I don't know if Windows Nickel will stay because of uh, the leadership change. Side Choker says, "Hope you're doing. Hope you were doing. Uh, could, do, hope you were doing well too. Uh, could we see XCloud on the Switch in the near future? Theoretically possible. Is Nintendo going to allow that? I don't think so. Uh, would Microsoft like to bring XCloud or cloud gaming to the Switch? Absolutely. Why wouldn't they? That's their their marching orders are to get more people to sign up for cloud gaming. And how would you do that? Put it on the Switch." I suspect that Nintendo would not allow that. I, I really don't. Uh, could we see an xCloud powered handheld from Microsoft or Xbox? I mean, theoretically, yes, but I would be. I don't know why they would. I think they should, they'd be better off taking the Surface Duo and adapting it to that type of an environment. But for Microsoft, it's more important for them to get cloud gaming subscriptions than it is to sell hardware because hardware has exceptionally low margins. Uh, actually, they might even. I don't think they're making money yet on the Xbox consoles uh, that they're selling the Series S and X. So I don't think they are. I. I really don't think they're going to build a dedicated handheld um uh will windows become completely free with windows 11 i i would imagine it's going to follow a very similar model for the consumer meaning when you buy a windows device from best buy or whatever you're actually paying a licensing fee you just don't see it there when you're upgrading your existing device probably not in the enterprise oh yeah they're definitely going to be paying uh microsoft would never give up the enterprise dollars uh windows 11 11 ui design on the surface duo 2 doubtful because it's android so i mean maybe if the neo ever you know resurfaces hey get the button but anyways i would not expect it uh, what restrictions could Luxembourg have the Game Pass X Cloud isn't available? It's probably just a, it, there could be local regulation or just something like that. I mean, you got to get, remember, like every time they showed it at the beginning of um, the E3, like all the different rating titles and everything else. And so you can't just make things available in markets and sell them. They have to go through regulatory approval. So that would be my guess. Uh, when can we expect an app on the PC to stream our own Xbox Series line? Uh... It, it existed at one point. I would. I thought they said at some point the second half of this year, but I might be misremembering that or not accurately portraying what I do remember. So, uh, Will says, do you think we will get hardware design updates for the Surface Book and Surface Pro around the time of the Windows 11 uh, release later this year? Oh, I okay. So that might actually make sense. Uh, that could be aligned. That might be pretty close. Um, Microsoft. Microsoft has a new Surface Pro. Uh, design. It's more closer to the Surface Pro X. There's also a new, I, I don't know if it's called the Surface Book, but there's a new Surface like laptop, almost like Surface, we'll call it Surface Laptop Pro. How about that? Like think Surface Laptop Pro. We have Surface Laptop, Surface Laptop Pro. Um, that might be the replacement for the Surface Book. I don't know if a Surface Book 4 is coming, but Microsoft is working on a higher end Surface line device. Um, that has a think Lenovo yoga style hinge, like one that's like 360 degree hinge that I think is going to replace something like this. I think so. Uh, we will, we will see. Uh, Glob, Globsco says, uh, is there any, is there something wrong with the first ring daily podcast feed? A new feed hasn't shown up in my podcast player since June 8th. I'm assuming that you're using pocket cast for whatever reason, pocket cast is having issues pooling our feed. Um, uh, if you're using iTunes, Google play or Spotify podcast players, um, those all appear to be, uh, working fine. Uh, the Mr. PK. I says, uh, the release of Windows 11 was unintentionally revealed and released to the surprise uh, for to ruin the, the reduce the surprise for next week, if I could read correctly. Do you think they will change the planned videos or do you think there are a number of new features that were not introduced in the leaked build? Or are you under an Argo <laughs> embargo already and cannot talk about it? No BS. I am not under an embargo uh, for this. I can confidently tell you that. So... I personally believe that we're going to, Microsoft isn't going to come out next week and show off something that was completely and fundamentally different to what we just saw in the leaked build. What I'm hoping we see is something that is a bit more mature than what we saw this week, because there were a lot of quite literal rough edges in the build that we saw that didn't have rounded corners. For example, that is one of the name or the themes or up style design updates for uh, for Windows 11 are rounded corners and like a lot of windows didn't have rounded corners. So I'm hoping we see more UI consistency across the OS and Microsoft's true vision of where this is going to land when it eventually arrives this fall. So 
keep that in mind. I still think Microsoft has a few, more than a few surprises for next week. So let's just keep going on that. We'll just, we'll wait. I mean, we're less than a week. So hopefully, well, by the time we do this podcast next week, we'll have all the deets, all the deets, which will be good. Uh, Rubber Duck says, hi, Brad, greeting from Belgium. Belgium has some wonderful breweries and beer. Uh, two questions. Uh, is there any clarity on how long games stay in Game Pass? So uh, it depends on the developer or the publisher, potentially. First party, I believe first party always are staying in. So Microsoft games that they build and, and fund and all that will stay in Game Pass forever. Third party games are really up to the agreement. Now, if Microsoft pays for lifetime, whatever, inclusion or whatever the, the business arrangement is, then that happens. But it, there's no, I don't believe there's any standard that, hey, it's going to be in Game Pass for a minimum of X amount of days. That is, it just really kind of depends on um on the agreements. Uh, how stable will the insider builds of Windows 11 be on release? Is it advisable to install them? It's advisable to install them on non-production hardware. If you have an extra laptop or something like that, that is a great place to do it. But if you have something where that is mission critical to your workload, I would absolutely not install it. I, I really wouldn't. You got to remember, there's a lot of things changing. Well, we don't know how much is changing quite yet under the hood. The UI elements are all changing and those can lead to, lead to uneasiness and just application incompatibilities. And so I would, I would hold off uh, until we get some more testing under the belt. Uh, Bashnat says, uh, first timer question. Well, welcome. Uh, why Ohio? Paul apparently loves to move a lot. Have you thought about moving and where to? I hear Pitts. Oh, I'm not moving to Pittsburgh. Uh, is a real great place. Now I'm just trolling. Okay, so I can't move to Pittsburgh ever in my life because I'm from Cincinnati and the Bengals and Pittsburgh have a, a pretty significant uh, NFL rivalry. Although, honestly, Pittsburgh, I haven't been through there. It is, it's a nice area. Uh, the reason why Ohio is I grew up in this area and now I have family who lives in this area. And so it would, if I moved, I'm quite literally moving away from my parents and my in-laws. My wife, uh, her parents moved down here. And so it's just an e easy place to live. If I want to get to New York, it's a 65-minute flight. If I want to get to Washington D.C., it's about a forty-five minute flight, um, and so it's just kind of it's kind of a, just an easier place to live. If I were to move anywhere uh, right now, I think like North Carolina would probably be pretty high up there. Like my and my ideal place would be someplace that's like four hours from the beach. I think like a nice beach would be it. So that way you have lower cost of living. But if you want to pick up and go for the weekend, it's something you can absolutely do. Um, Jim Chaplin says Battle of the Second Tier Sci-Fi Series Babylon 5 or Stargate I'm going to annoy everyone and say I haven't seen either um, <laughs> that's, that's about that uh, Shark47 says I'm curious to hear your thoughts about Panos Panay how would you rate his performance with Surface mainly so far it, I guess it depends on what context because he took over Surface that was in a bad place sort of um you got to remember windows rt and all that when he took over the leadership role and so things have really turned around and people i, be I believe look at surface as a higher quality product than say your run-of-the-mill like acer pc that you see at best buy um so from that perspective i think he's done a good job i don't think microsoft would have given him windows control of windows if they didn't think he was doing a good job i mean Sur service did crack two billion dollars in revenue although we don't know if they're making too much money on that if any at all so that's you know that I guess it depends how you frame it, but he has certainly, you know, created a following and a name for himself within the industry. He is now on the board of Sonos, and so he's done good things for the Microsoft brand and certainly not tarnished them, I think, in any way. Uh, but, I mean, nothing's perfect, right? You have, like, look what they did with the Surface Neo. That was all under Panos's belt. Um, they announced it and didn't ship it. And so there's other things that haven't done well uh, in the Surface lineup. The Pro X doesn't sell exceptionally well. Like the Studio, I don't think, sold exceptionally well. But they were also sort of class-defining devices. And I totally understand why they built both. So we will see. Uh, Windows will be a really interesting one because this is his this is his horse to ride now. And this is his presentation and his, uh, his, you know, his signature on this OS release. And so we will see. We will see. Uh, Rose Deloitte says, with the large slate of Game Pass games announced, in addition to the more and more titles in general, is there any storage updates coming? Even the Series X, you can only have a maximum of two terabyte uh, velocity storage, one player is one, one internal, one terabyte external. Swapping games to USB drive is annoying, as is redownloading them. So this is definitely one of the confining or the defining constraints of the next generation. It's not raw horsepower from the CPU or GPU or ray tracing or uh, HDR or even Dolby Vision now on the Xbox. 
its storage because games are getting so large. Microsoft is working with this. You got to remember, that's why they're bringing uh, cloud gaming to the console. That way you can at least try things out because the worst case scenario is right now is your drive is about full and you want to try out a new game. So you download it, which means you got to blow out another one from your drive and then you play it for five minutes like, ah, this isn't for me. And so you uninstall it and you got to reinstall the other game. That is like the worst case scenario that cloud gaming is trying to address. As for updates, I think we will eventually see it, but I don't think we're going to see it anytime soon. I mean, they're still completely sold out of all their consoles pretty much everywhere into June. And so the fact that they can't even sell their current devices, I can't imagine them updating uh, the internal storage, which is going to increase their cost. And then they're still not going to be able to sell them or make them in the capacity that they need to. Uh, JMBK BCK says, can you talk about what the options are for devs on .NET 5 or 6 for desktop? I've gotten a lot on... a uh, I've gotten lost on what will be supported. So Isman, I'm, I'm just going to read his comment because he did a wonderful job. He says, depends on the applications and the features required. I would ensure application libraries target .NET, .NET standard 2.0 instead of a specific framework. That is probably the best advice. And if you want to know more, definitely go read the rest of his comment because he really dives into which .NET framework and libraries you should be approaching. And last question of the week coming in with 37 minutes before this podcast started. Uh, Mad Thinus says, Looking at the leak of build of Windows 11, I have the feeling this is a core validation build. Most of the refresh is still in development branches. Is that a fair assessment? I don't know about the word most. Uh, there's definitely features and other things in other branches that have not been merged into this build that we saw. I, I, am, I can promise you that. As for most, I think we're I think this is a good solid framework for what we're going to see, but there's still a lot of things left on the table that have not been discussed. So, which really just lines it up nicely that I'm I'm amped for Thursday of next week. Uh, I believe it's 11 a.m. Eastern time is when the event will be streaming about Windows 11. I will absolutely be live tweeting, live writing, live videoing everything. It's going to be a busy day next Thursday, which means that you should keep it subscribed subscribed here because the only BS on this podcast is me.